excuse me for a second. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the mirror effect? The, no, the mirror effect. The mirror effect. Have you ever seen the So, like, yeah. So, like, right now, I'm having like, the mirror effect thing because, like, I'm looking at that thing. Is that like my main image? That yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm like, yeah. So, it's like super strange. It's so strange. Because you look different in the mirror. Hello everybody, we want to welcome you to Sip Easy Bar. Uh, this is, I guess you can call this sort of like a pilot. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick little rundown on what the Sip Easy Bar is. My name is Kevin Cook and uh, one of the co-founders of the bar, Sip Easy Bar. And uh, we designed this as a kind of a makeshift bar, a way to uh, provide the, our very thirsty guests who were limited with their options to get great craft cocktails when they were used to going to luxury, luxury bars and nice restaurants and, uh, you know, getting their environment fulfilled. So with COVID affecting everyone and their ability to get these unique and creative drinks, uh, we thought we could bring the drinks to you. So what we did is we have uh, several bartenders that have come together and created the same types of cocktails that we'd be creating if we were like when we were working in um, our luxury hotels and luxury uh, and, and our nice resorts and stuff and develop the system so we can bring them to you. Uh, which you can find at sipeasybar.com. Uh, the name Sip Easy Bar is kind of a little throwback to a speakeasy. So this is a modern 20s kind of a speakeasy style thing. Still legal, but this is our version of that. Um, and I would like to mention a few things that we do. <laughs> One of the things that we'd like to do, um, since not just the restaurant industry was affected by COVID, we are we're looking at different ways that we can work with a lot of other restaurants, a lot of other businesses. So we try to work local. And by local, I mean Orlando. Um, so wherever you're watching this from, this is basically Orlando. Working with as many small farmers as you can find, working with as many um, just local people and local businesses that have been affected like everyone else has this year. So as of April, when this bar concept just launched, we've been finding different um, different connections and a way to bring things together and just kind of keep people working, give people something positive to look forward to. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone has a nice little sip to work on, to, to, to enjoy in the comfort of their home. Uh, that's one of the things that we, that we do. Um, another thing that we are focused on, very heavily on, is a project within the Sip Easy Bar concept that we are calling the Bartender's Lounge. And the Bartender's Lounge is a way for the Orlando bartenders that have been furloughed to use their creativity to express themselves, like they, again, like they used to. And... The Sip Easy Bar is a con is a uh, basically is constructed to be the platform for them to be able to do that. So if you go to our website, you'll see something that says uh, Bartender's Lounge. Once you click on that, you'll see some of the bartenders that we're featuring. Um, Jelly Jamie Lee is one, an Orlando bartender. We've got Jr. We have uh, we have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say ah uh, one more time. <laughs> uh, we have Viviana who is here. That's me. And um, we've got a few others that are going to be coming along as well. We've got Noel, so, so they all express their creativity and their passion for making really great drinks. And we want to bring those drinks to you. So um, I'm going to stop saying um and let this beautiful lady here talk. I will start saying um now. Do not say um. <laughs> <laughs> we've, been, 
Use all of the allocation. I think arms. I think we have a couple more arms in there, or allocated for us. <laughs> um, so Cam asked me to come on here after creating the Bartender's Lounge uh, platform on Sipeasy.com, Sipeasybar.com, right? Yes. Um, and so I'm going to talk about kind of like the creative process first, like what I do um, when I'm coming up with a cocktail, um, and then we'll make the Midnight Song, which is the the song the cocktail that I submitted. Um, basically to kind of like be available to the public and um, answer <laughs> into that sort of thing. So um, I've been bartending for the past 12, little over 12 years. So I started when I was 18 years old because I don't know, I like, I was, I was celebrating hospitality. I always saw people having a great time at the bar. I always kind of wanted to be part of that. I, I love talking to people and I love being kind of like, you know, in the mix of things. So as soon as I was able to legally serve in the state of Florida, um, I went ahead and kind of badgered my boss into giving me the job. So I've been bartending for about 12 years now. I am super passionate about spirits. I'm super passionate about making cocktails. Um, and Very good. Very good. <laughs> I, I know what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> I, I drink most of the time just so that I can, you know, get good ideas. Um, but yeah, so uh, Kevin and I actually met uh, through work. Um, and, and it was a, kind of like an eye-opening experience for me. The, the job that we both... Uh, you know, had at the time gave us a lot of freedom and, and educated both of us, or at least me, because it was, it was really new to me, like the world of spirits, like craft cocktails and all that stuff. That was absolutely new to me, uh, when we started working together. And so I, I really was able to kind of play with a lot of spirits that you don't normally see. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's how, that's how I kind of got started into making craft cocktails. Um, the Midnight Song is something that I came up with uh, once I tried Creme de Violette for the first time. So Creme de Violette is a, it's a very, uh, it's a liqueur. <laughs> it's made with violet flowers. Um, it became popular, I think, in the 1920s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it's made, it's used in my favorite cocktail, which is an aviation. Um, so I, the reason why uh, the Midnight Song came about was because I tried Creme de Violette and I was like, holy crap, like this is like the best thing Amazing. ever. It's, so it's a beautiful spirit, a beautiful liqueur, it's a beautiful color. It gives like any cocktail that you make with it, like just elevates it in such a way. It's very unique. Um, so yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's really hard to, to come by. So if you ever do see it, definitely get it. Um, anyway, so the Midnight Song, uh, it, I wanted to, so it's vodka, Creme de Violette, uh, citrus and simple syrup. Uh, it's very approachable. I wanted to come up with something that was going to be approachable yet elevated. Um, definitely floral because that's the type of cocktail that I enjoy, even though I drink bourbon like 99% of the time. Trust me, I don't discriminate. I will drink literally everything that you put in front of me uh, because I just... <laughs> Well, that sounds really awful. But, no, I just enjoy... I enjoy... <laughs> Cocktail is thrown, which is a technique that um, was originally used when cocktail bars first started um, appearing back in the, like, I think it was late 1800s, late 1800s. That's how cocktails were originally made. Um, shaking cocktails was not a thing until the late 1800s. It's something that I read uh, about today because I knew it was going to be like that. Sure, he knew that. No, <laughs> but... Um, it was, it was something that came about like in the late 1800s and like one of the, you know, old timers or, or OGs, if you want to call them, that uh, basically said, oh, you know, cocktail making is dead because people are now shaking their cocktails. Um, throwing is a technique that aerates the cocktail um, and still dilutes, sorry, still dilutes, um, gives dilution to the cocktail without like necessarily overdoing it, if that makes sense. So, we use a little bit of orange vodka. Plus, when you shake a cocktail, the one just to add real quick, when you shake a cocktail, you're going to normally water it down a little bit more, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just because water, the, the water from that ice is part of the ingredients. Right. A shaking cocktail is if you're going to make a cocktail that you really want to kind of keep a little bit of that booziness behind. Right. But still chill it down nicely and, and give it a really good 
flavor and a good mouthfeel. So exactly, you don't really see a, like it takes a special bartender to come up with a cocktail. Like, oh, come on, maybe it, <laughs> this is good, but I'm not gonna shake it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it because it's, it can be it can be a little it's, more unique this way. Right? Yeah, yeah, it just kind of like accentuates. Um, it keeps the like. It gives a little more elegance, right. you know what I mean, to to the cocktail itself. It's also really kind of cool to look at whenever you see a, a, a bartender. Sorry, I just need a little special like that. I shouldn't need it. Um, it, it. It's more of like a, there's more flourish to it, yeah. you know what I mean? Of course, like shaking, you guys have been, I'm sure that like whoever's watching this right now have been to one or two cocktail bars, hopefully. Yeah. Um, what's it called? But um, not to mention when you see someone throwing something, throwing the cocktail as opposed to the regular shake, or not, and a, sh a good shaking cocktail is beautiful, don't get me wrong. But when you see someone throwing it, it catches your eye. You're like, what is this person doing? Like, why are they, why are they transferring this, this liquid from one container to the next in this method? It's it's you it's more unique. So and when you go, back in the day when we didn't have COVID, you would go to bars and go to bars and you would find something being traveled you know, from the bar or, or the kitchen sometimes over to a table and it's smoking and it's got, mm -hmm. you know, a bird attached to it. Anything that gets people's <laughs> eyes. A bird attached to it. I'm yes. serious. Tell me, that's where we were going with this I whole mean, thing. Everyone's yes, cocktail I want to attach to be food. as pretty as it was, you know, unique and tasty. So, yeah. you know, seeing someone make something and it just becomes a little bit more intensive to make can be just as exciting as with anything. I definitely agree. And so... We are making this over um, an ice cube that has frozen. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I, thought, yeah. I thought we were good. We were pretty much saying the same thing. So it's an ice cube that has frozen um, rose petals in it, and that just kind of uh, kind of placed into the uh, floral notes um, of the cocktail itself. You know, because of the creme de violet. Um, I did put some, so the citruses that I use. I use a little bit of lemon juice and I use a little bit of grapefruit. Um, you know, I. Grapefruit is just a, a really, my, it's one of my favorite citruses to mix with just because it's got enough sweetness, but it's also got the bitterness. So you have a little bit of, you know, it, it kind of like plays with your whole palate. Um, so yeah, so that's the Midnight Song. <laughs> it's the Midnight Song, which is available at sipeasybar.com uh, through the Bartender's Lounge. You click mm -hmm. on that, you can get a little bit of a bio from this very eccentric lady. You can see me dancing. She does do a little bit of dancing. <laughs> well, and I apologize. <laughs> no, you're a great dancer. I'm not a bad dancer. Three I just was ridiculous in that dancer. particular video. You know, three, three midnight songs and anyone's a good dancer. Oh, actually, yeah, that is actually a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely more than three midnight songs consumed that night, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at the risk of sounding like a total drunk, I'm sorry. Well, we should do a cheers. I'm gonna. Yes. I'm gonna do that like... guy on camera and just take the. No, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. We're gonna All right. Well, to cheers. Cheers. So, uh, thank you for joining us. And we apologize for all the arms. <laughs> We're just gonna edit that out. This isn't live. We're good. And <laughs> and um, yes, you can um, reach us at sipeasybar.com and follow us on the Insta stuff. It's the uh, same as it's Instagram and social. And, uh, it's at at right. sipeasybar. Yes. Right. On I just Instagram. forgot. To speak. I just forgot. At he's, and he hasn't had a minute song yet. Right? <laughs> Not on camera. I have it. No. Yeah. So uh, it's Facebook and yes, Facebook and Instagram. It's just sipeasybar.com. Oh, at Sip Easy Bar. At Sip Easy Bar. At Sip Easy Bar. At Sip Easy Bar. Bar. Please follow at Sip Easy Bar. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you for joining us. Cheers. Thank you for coming. I'm really going to do that sip, so cheers. <laughs>